everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part 25, so let's get started. In this session, we are looking at a super useful update for all of you online researchers and investigators. Basically, Google Earth has introduced a major new feature. The historical satellite imagery function is now available directly in the browser and the mobile app. This is huge for open source work because you don't need to rely upon Google Earth Pro anymore. So let's take a look at what this means and explore some real world case studies. So here's the new feature. It's up in the top browser section of the Google Earth viewer in your browser, whichever one you use. Basically, you click Activate Historical Imagery. Now, there's two types of function here. There is the time-lapse mode, uh, which allows you to see a time-lapse playthrough of satellite imagery over time. This is quite useful to look at, and we'll see some of these in the case studies that we look at. And then there's the historical imagery, and it shows the relevant dates for imagery. It allows you to select a specific year, and then you can scroll through those as well. We're also going to look in this section at how the annotations that you make on the satellite imagery are easily shareable, which is super, super useful when sharing any markings that you make or anything like that. So let's take a look at the first case study. We're going to look at the Amazon rainforest and specifically cases of deforestation. Now I'm going to go to a town called Yuri Maguas. I apologize for the horrible pronunciation there. Uh, but it is one that's located within the northeastern Peruvian Amazon. This is an area that has had a fair bit of deforestation around it and a fair bit of reporting around the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest. Specifically, the area that we're going to look at is just south of here, and it's a large plantation that you can see here. Using this time-lapse feature, what we're able to do is to have a look at how that area has changed over time. So you can see it scroll through from the 1990s right forward to the 2000, 2010s, and now 2020s. And what you can see is the deforestation that's happened there and subsequent change into what is actually a plantation now. Now this gives us an overview of the scale, but what we can do after we see that area is we can actually pause that switch to historical satellite imagery and zoom in on the area to take us from a macro view to a bit more of a micro view. So I'm going to zoom in on one of these areas, for example here, and we can really get quite close and have a look at the most recent satellite imagery of that, which is from 2023. Now this is quite useful because if we go back in time, we can start to see what this area looked like before and what it looks like now and the change in that area over time. So we can see when this used to be an actual rainforest or uh, quite a thick tropical area or thick covered area. And then we can see that was in 2004. Then we can see in 2009, the trees are just dead on the ground after they've all been uh, uh, chopped down and then we can see that area basically less of the trees there and then this more of a kind of farming plantation style area which it has since become that kind of plantation and you can see that across the board and if we go back to that image that we had previously where you could see those trees on the ground we can actually see that systematically throughout this area and this really helps us because we can do that zoom in and zoom out frequently to see what that area actually looked like in really good high resolution satellite imagery. And that really gives us that micro view of what the rest of the area looked like when we were doing that time lapse, that, that indication over time. So you can see how useful this is, for example, in creating that before and after effect as well as that time lapse, and it really gives a visually compelling look, but also a bit of an investigative look closer into the details as to what's happening on the ground. We're gonna look at a second case study now, which takes us to Syria 
And specifically, we're going to have a look at the city of Aleppo in Syria. This is an important case, and we're going to look at some of the areas in and around Aleppo. I'm going to switch to my historical imagery, and I'm going to give us a clean canvas here with no names on here, so we can just purely look at the satellite imagery without the distraction of names or anything like that. I'm going to go to my most recent satellite image, which is from the 27th of June 2024. And we're going to have a look at some past satellite imagery, specifically around the destruction caused during the Syrian civil war. The first area we're going to look at is this little area that seems to be around an industrial area right here. It's just in the southeastern side of Aleppo there. Because we have this historical satellite imagery available, I'm now looking at a view from 2012. We're going to go forward into February 2013. And what we can see here is smoke emanating from some of these buildings where there's been some destruction caused. And then we're going to go forward again. This takes us into May 2013. We can see some of that destruction uh, evident over there. And then forward again, and you can see that a number of the buildings surrounding here have actually been destroyed even some of these areas over here. If we go backwards and forwards, we can see that change in those buildings along there. In another area, in a village just east of Aleppo, we're able to see a similar type of occurrence, specifically through almost the entire village. This is an image, a very clear image from 2016. And we can actually go back to 2015 and see the indications of change there as well. By comparing the satellite images from 2010 and later up until 2016, it gives us a clear picture of how conflict has impacted this area and small towns like, for example, this one that we're seeing here. And that's why it's an essential tool for verifying news reports or researching things like human rights violations uh, within conflicts. The next case study we're going to look at is the site of Fukushima and specifically where there was a natural disaster. So we're going to look at that change over time of that natural disaster after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami where there was some devastating damage. With this satellite imagery tool, we can really go back in time and we can see what it looked like before the event but then also the subsequent destruction of some of these areas over here. This kind of comparison for before and after is really incredibly useful for disaster recovery researchers and journalists covering, say, for example, long-term effects of natural disasters. One of the additional features I really like of using the Google Earth online browser is that we can make really helpful annotations. Um, so you can add place markers, for example. I'm going to add a place marker to this building. I'm actually going to save it as a drive project, which is really helpful if you want to work on collaborative projects, and that'll save. What I can also do is add, for example, polygons to this. So this was one of the areas where there was immense destruction, I might flag this area out, which might be a potential uh, part for research. I'll save that to my project. I might actually give it a fill as well, just to show it in red. Um, and I'll save that as uh, for sure damage. Now, the reason why I've done that isn't just for myself, but it's also because what I can do is I can actually share that with colleagues. Um, and, and they can open this up and see those, those annotations and those markings. But I can also make a slideshow with each individual point that's been mentioned there. So you can see I first mentioned the, the building that was destroyed and the work that's been done there on that specific date. And then it'll go through and identify the next one of the view shed that I've saved, which is the uh, foreshore damage there as well. And it's got that table of contents there. So you can keep going to each one. And that's a really useful way to navigate between the sites, but also to share that with, with colleagues, for example, and make a quick presentation just based upon uh, the findings or the annotations that you've made there. 
So there you have it, that's Google Earth's new historical imagery feature uh, and collaboration features within the browser version of Google Earth. And it's really useful for open source research. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like, hit subscribe and stay tuned for more open source tool tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session.